How was it working um, on Cyrus with a great cast, John C. Riley, Marissa Tomei, Jonah Hill? It was terrible. Those guys were a pain in the butt, and it was awful. I hated it. Um, honestly, dream come true. We had all of our first choices. They're enormously talented people, and you know, it was the first time working with movie stars, and we had worked with some really amazing people who were our friends and also were actors before, but um, when you get a guy like John C. Riley in the room, the camera just goes to his face. You can't, you know, you can't help it. You, you just kind of commands it. it. It was an amazing experience. I think the nerves came in the first meetings with each person, you know. There was a certain point where we were sitting down over tacos with John C. Riley, and I know that Mark and I were both secretly thinking to ourselves, that's John C. Riley. We're eating tacos with him. He's really big. You know, he, it's, he's larger than life, and so there's a little bit of nerves at first, but, you know, after about 10 minutes, you start talking about film, and, you know, you realize very quickly that although he has made some of the best movies that have been released in the last 20 years, he's still hungry, and he's still excited, and he's still just looking for, you know, a new project that's something new and different, and a new way to make a piece of art. And he's really inspired in that way, and, you know, it, all the fanfare sort of melts away, and you realize that you're you're two people who are just trying to go after the same goal. What was that? The main thing that we wanted to do is, is is tell a love story and do it in a really unconventional way. We wanted an unconventional lead. We wanted a regular guy who was awkward and funny, and you know, you know, could go to some emotional depths. Um, and you know, specifically, we once we came up with the idea that the third side of this love triangle was going to be the woman's son. We felt like we had kind of like the perfect storm of, of weirdness and conflict to, you know, make a movie like ours go. Now Marissa Tomei, Academy Award winning actress, phenomenal actress. How was it working with her? Um, it's amazing. I mean, you know, we work in a very unconventional way. There's a lot of improv. People just come into a room, they have a genuine interaction. We film it as a documentary film crew. When that happens, I mean you're, you're really requiring a lot of courage and a lot of vulnerability from your actors and Marissa is just one of these people that you put her in a room and she will give you something different and inspired and with integrity every time. I mean, there's just nothing that she does that isn't great on some level. So, you know, really at that point for, for my brother and I, it's, it's just trying to figure out what's the right way to go or, or just what's the most interesting way to go. I mean, everything she does is great. Were you always a big fan of comedy film? Yeah, we love all comedy, we pretty much love all films. I mean, you know, and, and we do love um, bigger comedies. I mean, Dumb and Dumber is one of our favorite films of all time, but, um, you know, I guess, you know, for us, you know, we try to be like so many other filmmakers along the way. We try to be like the Coen Brothers in the mid 90s when we were in film school in Texas. And, you know, it just wasn't us. Like, ultimately, it wasn't until we started really sort of exploiting the private conversations we were having about people's inner worlds and you know the really awkward and embarrassing things that they were doing to each other and then we would giggle about it later. That was that once we started doing that on film, that's when we started getting into Sundance and people really started recognizing us and really appreciating what we were doing and, and saying specifically that it is something new, you know, and, and so for us it's really about that documentary realism of a relationship with as much humor that we can bring to it secondarily. Speaking of filmmaking, you guys have a unique method, the Duplass method. Talk a little bit about that. The Duplass method. I'm going to talk about myself in third person now. <laughs> um, I, uh, you know, I guess our method really is, is, you know, motivated by the fact that we are obsessed with documentaries. We're obsessed with anything that looks and feels completely real. We don't really do that type of filmmaking where you just have one camera and you know the actor comes into the room and they hit their mark and they talk to a person who probably maybe isn't even there. You know, our interactions really are happening, and you know we're trying to create a sense that like anything could happen here in this moment. Mainly just because that's what we're motivated by and that's what we're we're really inspired by, and so it really does change the methodology of filmmaking where the cameras really come to the actors as opposed to forcing the actors to come to this giant machine that you've built on set. One of the main things that we like to tell people who are coming up in the film is 
Get it out of your head that you're going to make a feature and it will either be good or it will be bad. That's not how it worked for us. It took us probably 10 years before we made anything at all that we felt was, was of any value. I mean, we were very derivative for a long time. We were trying to find our voice. It's a hard thing to do. The great thing right now is that you can buy a thousand dollar camera and you can shoot thousands of movies, you know, and, and that's what we encourage people to do is go out every weekend, write something, direct a short film and keep making stuff until you figure out what it is that you uniquely have to offer the world. I mean, there's the technical side of making films, but beyond that and what's much more important <coughs> than that is really figuring out who you are and what you have to offer. Jay, I want to thank you for taking your time. Thanks, man.